Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort here at Universal Orlando. We've been trying to get here for what feels like years. It's only probably been about a year since we found out about it, looked at pictures, and thought, hey, we'd really like to stay here, but it feels like forever, you know? Weather's a little bit spotty today, and there is a conference going on as well, so it's busier here than it would normally be, and I can't. I can only do so much outside shooting. But we're gonna try our best to give you a great hotel tour today. We've been staying here for a couple of days now. We feel like we've got the lay of the land, and now we're gonna give you that same lay of the land so you can decide whether or not it's worth it to you to stay here on your upcoming Universal Orlando trip. I'm Tim, Katie's inside. We do things like this. So this main entrance area is where airport transportation is gonna drop you off. It's where Superstar Shuttle drops you off, and it's where Uber and Lyft are gonna come grab you if you call for them. It might not look like much from the outside, but just wait until we head inside. So Sapphire Falls has kind of a tropical and or nautical theme throughout. The lobby is the first impression you're gonna get of that, but it continues through the entire resort. Off of the main lobby, you have one restaurant, one cafe, and one really big gift shop. Just inside the main lobby is the Universal Vacation Planning Center. If you've purchased a vacation package of any kind, as we did, this is where you'll go to pick up your theme park tickets, your express passes, and anything else that you might need to enjoy your time at the Universal Parks. They also have the celebration buttons here, so if you are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or just being out and about after a year inside, you can pick those buttons up here as well. Strongwater Tavern is adjacent to the lobby, and it's a really neat little bar. They've got an observation deck where you can really get a clear view of the parks and the falls. Unfortunately, their hours are pretty limited here, so it looks like they open at 5 today, and then they're open late, but if you're trying to get breakfast or lunch here, you're out of luck. Just off the main lobby and right behind me there is the New Dutch Trading Company. I think of this as being like Cafe Plus. It does serve snacks, it does serve coffee, it does serve biscuits, you can get a quick breakfast bite there, but you can also piece together a whole meal if you need to. And we have, we've gotten back really late. The cafe here is open until 11 p.m., so we got some fruit cups, we got a couple of sodas, we got a little salad, and we pieced together a meal out of that. So this is another great option, and a pretty quick and cheap option if you need just you know a quick bite to eat before you head to the parks, or after, as we did, you get back late from the parks, you can cobble together a whole meal. Really, really really like this spot. And it wouldn't be a Universal Resort if you didn't have a Universal Studios store. Naturally, there's some ride-specific stuff that's only gonna be found in the parks next to the specific attractions, but for the most part, the Universal Studios store has everything the parks have, including wands, masks, t-shirts, pins, paraphernalia. They even have some traditional hotel gift shop items like Advil, sunscreen. I bought a pair of flip-flops here just the other day. They were wildly expensive, but I needed them, and they were here. Directly behind me is the Amatista Cookhouse, which is kind of like the catch-all restaurant. They have a breakfast buffet in the mornings, and during lunchtime and dinner, they have a set menu which you can pick from. They open for breakfast as early as seven. We found that it can be pretty much a ghost town around that time, so if you've got like early park admission, you can have a quick bite to eat from the breakfast buffet and then zip off to the park. Breakfast buffet itself is nothing to write home about, but nothing was bad. It's just, okay. Nice at least to have something that's open this early so that you can zip in and zip out and get on with your park day. When you're about ready to head to the parks, you're gonna be going right past the Amatista Cookhouse and out the door, you're gonna find the water taxi platform pretty much just outside the building. And if you go a little bit further than that, you'll find the resort shuttle depot as well. There is also a footpath to the Universal theme parks, but you are definitely not gonna be saving any time. If you think you're shortcutting the line by going on foot, you're not. It's gonna take about 30 minutes versus the taxi taking about 10. Still, I suppose it's nice to have the option of the walking path, particularly if you've been partying hard at City Walk and you've missed the last water taxi and you have no other way back. They call that the walk of shame around here, though. You will be judged. Just off of the pool complex and on the second floor of the Sapphire Falls Resort is the recreation complex, which does include an indoor gym. That's the Kalina Health and Fitness Center, which is open from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. There is an indoor arcade here for the kids as well, but unfortunately, due to social distancing, it is closed. This stone-lined stairwell is kind of the connective tissue between all the amenities of the resort. It's also probably the most stylistic piece of the resort and definitely my favorite part of walking through. You've got the lobby and the shops on floor four, you've got the pool and the athletic complex on floor two, and you've got the restaurant and the water taxi on floor one. 
all connected by the stairwell. Each wing of hotel rooms here has been divvied up into what they call guest houses. So we're in guest house two, I think they go up to guest house four. Four different wings total. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head on up to our room, which is on the seventh floor. I have to go see Katie. One thing we did pick up on fairly quickly, which I think is very cool, is that your room number is actually based on a couple of different things. The guest house you're in, the floor you're on, and then the wing, the actual number of your room. So we are in guest house two, we're on floor seven, and we're in room 18 along this row, which means our room number is 2718. Makes it easier to remember. Why, it's Katie! Welcome to our Two Queen Lagoon View room. I almost said suite. It's not a suite, but it's a nice room. It's a sweet room. Oh yeah. Now let's be clear, this is not a Disney Resort hotel, so there are no hidden Murphy beds, there are no hidden Mickeys, there's not a whole lot to go through here. This won't take long, but it's still an amazing room. We've been enjoying our time here tremendously. We'll start the way we always start, by privatizing the space just to be sure. You can see this pattern continues from the floor outside into the actual room. It shifted slightly because the material changed, but it's still kind of on brand. And then it becomes watery as you enter the actual carpeted area of the room. Within our little closet space here, we have all of our junk, but more importantly, we have an iron. We have an ironing board. We have a rack to hang clothes on. We have our hotel safe. And then we have plenty of space for suitcases and shoes to get them out of the way. Moving into the bathroom area, they've given us a little tray here for what toiletries we wanted to bring. Bar soap, which I never enjoy, but every hotel does that, so no surprises. And here's a little, little cubby full of utensils. Tissue box, pretty standard. Here's your makeup mirror. Yeah. If I could only highlight one thing about this room, this would be the thing. Ready? So you're looking around in the bathroom area and you're like, I don't have enough light to shave. How am I going to get a clean shave with no light? Oh no. Doot, 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 doot. You actually have a touch screen mirror. Don't ask me how it works. I have no idea. But it brightens the mirror border. And that's your light. Drop down underneath the sink and you will find a basket of additional towels. To our left is our shower and toilet. It does have a little bench in there so you can sit while you shower. And they gave us a handful of the essentials for body wash, shampoo, and all that. No brand names, but to be honest, I'm not sure that Lowe's has such a brand. You don't have a ton of space in the shower, but you do have a laundry line which you can use to dry your bathing suits. Critically important if you're going to be sharing a room with other people. Partition barn door. Moving into the room, we have this lovely metallic print of a boat, kind of fitting with that tropical theme I talked about earlier. These overbed lights also kind of have a nautical feel to them. I don't know if that was the intention. I assume that it was because it matches everything else. But if you hate them, you can go without them. Of course, they gave us a TV to work with. And as usual, in the time of COVID, we have a pre-wrapped remote. Nobody has touched this but us. Of everything in the room, I think the coffee machine might be the one thing they really skimped on. This is, this is an interesting machine that we couldn't quite figure out. I mean, either it's broken or I just don't know how to use it and they, there's no instructions, so. I just bought coffee downstairs, which probably tastes better anyway, so. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they tried to give us a coffee machine. Whether or not this one is broken or we're just stupid, I don't know. Once again, as we come around the bend, we've got another piece of tropical and or nautical art, kind of getting you into the mindset of vacation. Underneath the TV, this cabinet has two drawers on either side. I'm not gonna open them because we've shoved a bunch of clothes in them. And to be honest, I don't know which ones are clean and which ones are dirty, but there you are. You also have a small mini fridge. Ours is a little bit wobbly. You have enough space in here to probably put maybe one set of leftovers on that top rack there and a line of water bottles or soda bottles as we have. You don't have a ton of space though, so I would not plan on bringing, you know, six entrees back and making that last the week. You don't have a microwave in here anyway, so 
that would probably not be the best course of action regardless, but you can rent a microwave for $15 a day. The desk area, pretty spacious. Plenty of room to pull out the old computer and do a little bit of editing, if you're us. We've got over here two AC outlets and two USB outlets, but my one gripe about the USB and AC outlets throughout the entire room is that they're kind of placed weirdly. Like, you can't have two USBs plugged into this outlet and then plug, like, one of our Ventive power banks in because it will overlap the USBs. These are much closer together than I'm used to them being. Aside from the weird outlets, there's nothing particularly special about this bedside table. We did get a complimentary bottle of Sapphire Falls sanitizer. And then in here, enough drawer space to shove all of your electronics, or in our case, an umbrella. Keep it ready for whenever you might need it. Down below, just a nice little cubby spot to shove all your travel bags. There is a pretty shallow desk drawer here as well. If you wanna throw pens or notebooks or, yeah, you could take your universal travel log and put it in there. And then you have this chair, which is Katie's favorite sitting and looking out at the world chair. Is it comfy? It's fine. It's true, there's no ottoman. And now we come to our favorite part of staying at Sapphire Falls. The view! Look at that. We got a lagoon view room, so we're not seeing the theme parks, but we are seeing the bay, and we get to watch the water taxi go back and forth, which is just really peaceful. You can't see Fun Spot over there. It's true. If you have a pair of binoculars or a zoom camera, you will be able to make out Fun Spot pretty clearly. We did pay a little bit extra for Lagoon View, so you're not necessarily guaranteed to get a Lagoon View room. I think a lot of them are facing the parking lot. So if you don't specifically ask for and pay a little bit more for either a Lagoon View or a theme park view, you're probably gonna be facing said parking lot for most of your stay. But if you can get a Lagoon View room or a theme park view room, the view almost makes it worth staying here on its own. It's really, really cool. At last, we come to the bed. <gasps> Very fluffy pillows. I slept soundly two nights in a row, so I'm happy. That's a high rating to achieve. I too thought that the bed was quite comfortable. It's a little bit firmer, so you soft sleepers might have a harder time getting used to that mattress, but honestly, I, I think I got some of the best sleep of the past several vacations on this bed. Lo and behold, the sun has appeared. Quick to the pool before it rains again! Sapphire Falls boasts the largest pool on Universal Orlando Resort property, and with that, they have some of the best water slides on property as well. My humble opinion. I don't know quite how big it is, but I know it's big. You hear that? Those are the shrieking news. <laughs> the water feels freezing until you're in it for about five minutes. And then it's like the perfect temperature. So these cabanas here are first come, first serve, but they are bookable. I don't know how much they cost, but for insert price here, you can have a TV, a kind of temperature control with the fan in here, a set of towels, a couch, and a table. All to yourself, they'll book it off for you. This is actually a pretty neat little area up here, right next to the pool bar, which we'll check out in just one minute, is this area of sand, really hot sand, ouch, with a fire piece center. Obviously this isn't going right now, but I bet you come nightfall, they're gonna light it up. Oh, awesome, it's Black Bart's cave, no way. For those of you who don't watch South Park, that was my flawless Eric Cartman impression. There is a pretty sizable hot tub here, but unfortunately, for the time being, the hot tub is closed. I don't know if that's just today and we got unlucky or if it's gonna be the duration of our stay, but Definitely check back if you are lucky enough to find it open. It looks like it's gonna be a fun time. And if your little one doesn't quite cut it on the water slide, they can always come over here to this awesome splash pad. I think this is on the east side of the pool. Come at last to the Drum Club Cantina, which is your full service pool bar. Drum Club Cantina serves a full and very tasty bar menu, but you don't have to come here to order from it. They actually come to you. Actually, I think our food may have arrived while I've been up walking around. So let me check back in with Katie on that. Whoa, dog. Whoa. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. There's actually a fork in the path around the pool that splits off to the left, 
if you follow that little trail, you'll find yourself at the waterfall overlook area, which in my opinion is the best part of the resort. I am a sucker for waterfalls though. All right guys, that just about wraps it up. I think we've covered everything there is to cover, at least everything that we have access to right now. Like I said, the arcade is closed for the time being. We don't have much need to go into the fitness center just now. Um, but most everything else is open. I can see why this was one of the last resorts to come back online because it is a pretty expansive resort. There's gotta be thousands of employees working shifts here today. One thing we didn't mention is that Sapphire Falls is actually interconnected with uh, the Royal Pacific Hotel, which is just across the way. They're connected literally by a mezzanine, so you can walk from one resort to the other. The only reason we didn't do that for you is because there is actually a convention or a conference of some kind going on right now, so it's very, very busy in those areas. So just so you know that Mezzanine does allow you access to the Royal Pacific from Sapphire Falls and vice versa, but you really don't have much of a need to leave your resort for anything. You have food, you have a pool that's amazing with a great water slide, you have several different gift shop options, and even if all the restaurants are closed for the day, they still keep that little cafe open really late at night, and you can always grab little snacks there. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and sign off. We'll catch you in the next vlog, and remember that every day is a new adventure.